our place in the Milky Way. On a summer's night far away from the city lights, one can gaze up at the sky and see this, a faint white band across the night sky. We call it the Milky Way galaxy. Now when Galileo pointed his telescope at the Milky Way, he discovered that it was composed of lots of tiny points of light, lots of stars apparently far, far away. This is a drawing of the Milky Way. It's a spiral galaxy hosting several hundred billion stars. And our solar system is at this location here. And all the stars are rotating around the core of the galaxy. Modern technology reveals a world not accessible to us with the original equipment of our senses. So with a camera, we can resolve the Milky Way in much greater detail. And why is that? Well, when we have a faint star far away, photons of light are going to hit the back of our eye in the retina, and the rod cells will detect an individual photon. But it takes time to process that photon. Electrical signals sent to the brain, and meanwhile, that rod cell cannot detect the next photon in the chain. So because of this processing time, this buffering as it were, our eye is not able to sense all of the light that is hitting the back of the eye. But a camera sensor can. A camera sensor can simply collect more and more photons and register a larger and larger signal. When we look at a picture of the Milky Way, we see these dark areas. This is the dust in the spiral arms of the Milky Way that blocks the light from the stars behind it. Sometimes when we take pictures of the Milky Way, some of our sister planets photobomb the scene, as in this picture. Here we see Saturn and Jupiter, planets in our own solar system, set against the backdrop of the Milky Way. If the solar system is our local neighborhood, the Milky Way is a great metropolis. Our sun illuminates a rocky world in a neighborhood far from the core of the galaxy. From high atop a volcanic mountain, the Milky Way's imposing presence dwarfs a lightning storm. When the sun rises, the abundance of scattered blue light from our atmosphere hides the twinkling furnaces far away. During sunset, the Milky Way peeks through the fading blue shield that is the daytime sky. In Monument Valley, humans gaze at the towering rock structures by day, but at night they are small when measured against the Milky Way. Great mountains try their best to touch the sky. But they are mere ripples on a small rocky world in a distant neighborhood of the Milky Way. Electrical storms that can frighten children are tiny flickers in the immense Milky Way. Moving 62 miles vertically is all it takes to reach outer space, the most common environment in the Milky Way. A national park is a refuge from the polluting light of our skies. At high elevations, there is less atmosphere to distort the light from distant stars. Planet Earth has many beautiful locations that we can enjoy during the daytime. But they can also be beautiful foregrounds for the majestic Milky Way.
scientists are confident that most stars in our old galaxy have planets. When contemplating the huge number of planets in the galaxy, a question naturally arises. Are there other life forms in our galaxy? Or are we alone? Maybe they live in dwarf galaxies outside of our own, the small and large Magellanic clouds. If other life forms do exist, are they technological? Can they communicate at the speed of light? If such a civilization lived near the core of the galaxy, it would take nearly 26,000 years for a message to travel between us and them. Are they looking for us, just as we are looking for them? Perhaps this is what it looks like on an exoplanet orbiting a faraway star where alien life forms enjoy the spectacle of the Milky Way just as we do. But a watery world is more likely to host life as we know it on Earth. With powerful telescopes, humans have discovered that the Milky Way galaxy is not the only one in the universe. In 1995, scientists did a risky thing. They pointed the Hubble Space Telescope to a region of empty space. They didn't know what they would see, if anything. The result was so spectacular that they repeated this observation in 2003. This is the tiny region in the night sky that they pointed the telescope to. It appears to have no stars or nothing in it. But they exposed the image for 11.3 days. And what they found was amazing. 10,000 galaxies in a tiny patch of sky that appeared to have nothing. Clearly we have neighbors. Uh, most of these bits of light are galaxies at various distances. We can see a few uh, Milky Way stars here, 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 and up there. More recently, the James Webb Space Telescope has been snapping fantastic pictures. It is very clear that a lot of galaxies were invited to the party that is our universe. So where are we? Well, in one galaxy among many. And what are we? Star stuff, come alive, conscious and curious. Learning our place in the universe has enriched the lives of many humans. In a quiet moment, we might ponder, what does it all mean? Science raises the challenging possibility that we live in a universe that made us, but was not made for us. In this view, there is no meaning that is built into the universe. We must make our lives significant in our own way. And here we can rely on the wisdom of a deep and inspirational thinker, Carl Sagan. We make our world significant by the courage of our questions and the depth of our answers. And if we can use our intellect and our technology to do this, and do it well, then we will make true the following thought, again from Carl Sagan. We 
are a way for the cosmos to know itself.